Oakwood University has published several videos openly defending abortion and vilifying people who oppose it. There are three episodes titled Roe vs. Wade Reversal, and each are full of false, misleading, or completely absurd statements. But at this point, that probably won't be a surprise to anyone. And since I've already made entire videos refuting most of the errors, I won't give much of a commentary other than to point out several important lessons. Usually, I play the video clips of them speaking, but because there are simply so many statements, I will just put the link down below so that you can go listen for yourself. Number one, the most important lesson comes from the host of the program, Dr. Leslie Pollard, president of Oakwood since 2011, a quote, historically black Adventist university. In these episodes, he openly praises and supports the Adventist church's official position on abortion as a quote, very moderate centrist statement. Again, centrist and that the Adventist position, quote, honors the right to choose. This is very important because Adventist leadership, they know full well that the church supports the legalized killing of unborn children and that it has done so for over 50 years. They know this. In 2019, when the church passed a new statement, you may remember at the year-end meetings for the North American Division, the then President Dan Jackson openly reassured church leaders that yes, the new statement did in fact contain a loophole for elective abortion, aka abortion on demand. The leaders of our church and institutions are not stupid. They know full well what the position teaches. A recent Gallup poll found that, quote, black Americans have become, read it for yourself, have become what? Have become more likely to support abortion rights over the past decade. And they are now as likely as non-black Americans to say that abortion is morally acceptable and slightly more likely to support legal abortion in all circumstances. This marks a what? a significant change from just 15 to 20 years ago. From the year 2007 to 2020, black Americans' belief that killing children is morally acceptable jumped a whopping 15%, and since the Adventist church follows culture and not vice versa, it's not a surprise to see black Adventist leaders come out in support of abortion. Lesson number two. By claiming this is a centrist, very moderate position, Dr. Pollard is using the exact same tactic used by church leaders for over 50 plus years. By trying to present the church as neutral on the topic and not taking sides. You may remember the famous quote from former president Neil Wilson, father of current president Ted Wilson, who in 1970 told the international media religious news service that though we walk the fence, Adventists lean towards abortion rather than against it. Adventist leadership have tried for decades to create in the mind of the public and within our own church that we are somehow neutral, but this is a complete lie because there is no neutrality between life and death. The child will die or the child will live. To claim otherwise is a denial of our biblical belief about the state of the dead. There is no neutral ground between life and death. Now, when you go watch these videos, all you have to do is substitute the words slavery or rape for the word abortion. What if a church leader said that we've taken a very centrist position on rape or we are very moderate on slavery? <laughs> that, is, that is, of course, completely absurd. Notice that we're not moderate on tithing. Oh no, we very much take sides when it comes to tithe. But when it comes to the killing of a little boy or girl, oh, we should be centrist and quote, honor the right to choose. Yeah, okay. And lesson number three, typical of Adventist leadership, they repeat the word biblical over and over again as if, as if the word itself is some sort of magical mantra. Yet nowhere do they provide any actual biblical evidence or argument. Just because you repeat the word biblical does not make it so. Go listen to the video for yourself if you can bear it. All they can do is keep saying that God gave us freedom of choice. But again, to demonstrate the awful hypocrisy, why is it that when it comes to rape and to slavery, we Adventists can't appeal to freedom to choose? But when it comes to the violent killing of little children, oh, suddenly that's okay. 
And if freedom to choose means that killing children should be legal, then this means that there is no purpose for government. Because if the government cannot legislate civil society, especially the Sixth Commandment, then there is no purpose for government. As I've repeatedly pointed out before, if you listen carefully to Adventist leadership and follow their teaching to its logical conclusion, they are making the argument for anarchy and lawlessness. Has God given freedom to choose? Yes, of course. But he has also given the government both the authority and duty to legislate civil society. It's not a matter of either or, but both and. Both are true at the same time. And the right to life is the most fundamental of rights. If you don't have the right to life, then you have no other rights because everything is dependent upon the right to life. It's not a matter of either or, but both and. You have freedom to choose, and the government also has the authority and duty to regulate civil society and legislate the Sixth Commandment. Adventist leadership try to create a false dilemma, but it's not either or. Both are true at the same time. And typical of Adventist leadership, they not only completely avoid this problem, but spend three episodes making completely absurd statements. There are many examples, so I'll just point out a few. This here is Pastor Kimberly Mann, a pastor for the Oakwood University Church, speaking about the decision of the Supreme Court justices to overturn Roe. She complains and says, quote, I matter so little that someone somewhere whose decisions won't even affect them are now going to affect me and my future daughters. The fantastic level of selfishness here is really something that you have to hear for yourself, so go watch the video. She argues that the court's decision is bad because she as a woman somehow means so little, but this is just stupid for all sorts of reasons. The most obvious being that her complaint has nothing to do with the court. These three episodes are titled, read it for yourself, Roe vs. Wade Reversal. And not one single time, not even once, does either Dr. Pollard or any of these pastors or leaders cite from the actual Dobbs decision that overturned Roe. And since they didn't do it, I will. The actual decision of the court reads, and I quote, to be clear, then the court's decision today does not outlaw abortion. On the contrary, the court's decision properly leaves the question of abortion for the people and their elected representatives. Because, as was stated in the decision, the work of the court was to consider the quote critical question whether the Constitution confers a right to obtain an abortion. This is a matter of legal history and historical facts. To try to frame this as some great disdain for women is false and absurd. And to claim that this will not affect others is just stupid because the right to life literally affects everybody. Furthermore, if this woman pastor is upset that Roe is overturned, then this can only mean that she really believes that the killing of children should be legal. Which means that according to her, the government does not have the right to legislate civil society. Which only brings us back to the previous question. And if she believes the court is wrong, why can't she or anyone else cite even one sentence from the decision or demonstrate why it's wrong? And of course, the biggest elephant in the room is that if Adventist leadership really believed that this was an actual right, they would be screaming from the rooftops. But remember that when the Dobbs decision came down in June of 2022, they did absolutely nothing except murmur and complain. Our Religious Liberty Department did absolutely nothing to either challenge or refute this decision, which is the biggest, most blatant, most in-your-face proof that deep down our Adventist church leaders know very well that the court's decision is historically correct and accurate. Furthermore, <laughs> Please pay, please pay attention and notice that since the decision, the issue has been thrown back to the states. And do you see our Adventist leaders fighting for this in the states? To my knowledge, they are not because they know. They know that they have no case. And to make matters worse, this same woman in the same episode tries to claim that the SCOTUS decision prevents doctors from saving the mother in a life-threatening situation. But this, again, is completely false and absurd. The decision does no such thing. Also, this woman here is Dr. Donna Roper Roach, director of curriculum for the Oakwood Graduate School. She also makes the same false claim that this prevents saving a mother's physical life. The amount of 
ignorance on display here is unbearable. Now, because I personally have been studying this issue so much and engaging with so many people who teach these things, I have over the years become quite jaded and calloused, but even this was hard for me to listen to. The only explanation how someone can make these claims is because number one, you have suffered some type of serious injury to the brain, rendering you incapable of thinking, or because you willfully, purposefully choose not to educate yourself because there is no way that you can read the court's decision and come to these conclusions especially with the abundance of information so freely available. And notice carefully that this series was in September. The court's decision had been published back in June. These people had three months to study this, four if you count the leak. And this here is Chaplain Corey Rowe, an assistant professor at Oakwood. He said, quote, I have, I have my wife and I have three daughters and to know that the Supreme Court could just make a law that to me personally discriminates against an individual's right to procreate or not to procreate, it's a very serious matter. I think it violates freedom of choice that the creator gave us and that was removed and taken overnight and that the decision traumatizes women. No, the court did not pass a law. And no, this does not discriminate against the right to procreate because abortion can only happen after you have already created something. The child is already alive. The decision is not to create the child, but whether it's okay to kill it. And how in the world, how in the world can removing the freedom to kill children, quote, traumatize women? Can you imagine if someone argued that slaveholders are being traumatized because they can't have slaves anymore? Th this is just so stupid. In episode part two at five minutes and 45 seconds, he says that he number one, wants to be a law abiding citizen, but that laws against abortion are taking away his choice and quote, creating an oppression on me. So being a law abiding citizen is good, but passing laws to stop the killing of children is oppression. We have arrived at the point in Adventist history when leaders without any shame whatsoever claim openly and publicly that they are being oppressed if the killing of children is not legal. Now, take a moment to really appreciate that. They are being oppressed and victimized if abortion is not legal. This gives an excellent opportunity to cite from Desire of Ages, page 286. Every false religion teaches its adherents to be careless of human needs, sufferings, and rights. Every year, multiplied tens of millions of little boys and girls in the womb are being violently tortured and killed. And Adventist leaders whine and complain that if this is not legal, then they, the leaders, are being oppressed. I know that many of you probably won't want to go watch these videos, but you need to go and watch them so that, or at least one of them, so that you can see and hear this for yourself. The level of sickness and depravity and insanity that is on display here is really something that you have to go hear for yourself. And this here is Dr. Howard Weems, Special Assistant to the President for Biblical Foundations, a teacher in religion and director of the Ellen White Research Center. In episode three, he makes the completely absurd statement that abortion is not a black and white issue of right or wrong, saying, quote, I think we have to stay away from the black and white. It's not a right or wrong and that there are exceptions for abortion. And go ahead and just guess. To those of you watching this video, please go ahead and guess what exception he cited. Are you ready for this? He said, quote, there are some exceptions. If the death of the fetus, for instance, before birth, you know, you have to extract. This again is so absurd because removing a dead child has nothing to do with the discussion or court's decision. This has nothing to do with Roe versus Wade or Dobbs. It has nothing to do with anything. Removing a dead child from a mother has never been a moral issue. In the last 50 plus years, just within our own church, we have never ever seen anyone anywhere at any time make the claim that it's wrong or morally questionable to remove a dead child. It's already dead. So to present this as some sort of exception for killing living children, this is completely absurd. This whole series is a compilation of one absurdity and falsehood after another. And what's so terrible about all of this is that this is what we've come to expect. The reputation of Oakwood and our church leadership is so bad that this is what we have come to expect. This is not a surprise. 
There are many other statements, but I'll comment on one more. In episode three, Dr. Pollard frames this as a, <laughs> he frames this as a testing truth. And this woman pastor says that how we as Adventists respond to the reversal of Roe versus Wade reveals our hearts. Now this you have to listen to, so let's listen to what she said. Mm -hmm. I, I think that the Bible talks about how in the last days, things that we would see, but more so what the hearts of men would look like. And yes. I think more than anything, this is revealing the hearts of men. We have people who say that they're Christians, but are speaking with such vitriol, I mean, physically harming women mm -hmm. who are trying to seek, you know, proper health care. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that is more so a testing truth of who we are and who we mm -hmm. say we are and who we believe in mm -hmm. um, than maybe even the law itself. So it's a test of what we believe and mm -hmm. how we comport mm -hmm. and how we behave and how we treat others. Absolutely. That's the test. So excellent question. Is it true that how we Adventists respond to the murder and holocaust of tens of millions of children every year, is it true that our response reveals our hearts and who we really believe in? Yes, that is true. We can agree on that point. However, she then says there are Christians who are, quote, speaking with such vitriol and physically harming women who are trying to seek proper health care. So, did you, did you catch the euphemisms? The killing of a little boy or girl is, quote, proper health care. That's okay, but physically harming women who try to kill their child, oh, that's not okay. Remarkably, but unsurprisingly, she didn't provide any statistics or references how often women seeking abortion are physically harmed by Christians who oppose this. According to the CDC, although black women make up only 6-7% to 7 of the population, they are responsible for over 35% of all abortions. Yet, these leaders here at Oakwood repeatedly claim that the overturning of Roe will, quote, adversely impact black women. <laughs> Dr. Pollard claims the overturning of Roe is, quote, this is a real quote, wreaking havoc on families. Of all the different demographics within the Seventh-day Adventist Church, black American Adventists are by far the most supportive of abortion as a general trend. Over the years, and especially recently, I have had many opportunities to interview many black American Adventists on why this is the case, and I will explain that more in detail in an upcoming video, so be sure to see that to learn more. Why black Adventists are so hardcore committed to abortion is very interesting. So again, be sure to watch that upcoming video. There is, of course, much more that can be said, but it will be better to end this video on with a very helpful, important tip. Never, and I mean never, ever say anything overtly political. When you are talking with black American Adventists, especially on this topic of abortion, never say the words Democrat or Republican or Reagan or Hillary or Trump. It is, it is a very common tactic for them to bring this up first and try to frame you as being political because the moment that you say something overtly political, they will use this against you to reject what you are saying. Always stick with the Bible and the Bible only. Black Adventists know that they will lose if you bring up the Bible, so they will very often try to bait you into an overtly political argument, and if you take that bait, you lose instantly. So if you are talking with a black American Adventist and they accuse you of being political, you have to immediately reject this and say, no, I'm asking about the Bible. I'm asking a specific Bible question. I'm not talking about politics. I'm asking a question about the Bible. Can you please give me a Bible answer why the government does not have the right or duty or authority to legislate the Sixth Commandment? When they try to play the political card, it's because they they are experiencing conviction and they know that they're going to lose and they want to bait you in order to reject the evidence. Do not take the bait. Stick with the Bible and the Bible only because the very moment that you say something overtly political, you lose. I cannot emphasize this enough. When talking with black American Adventists, never ever get into an overtly political discussion. They will almost always do it first in order to bait you. And if you take the bait and mention even one political name or word, you lose. 
Just zero in on the text of the scripture and hang on to the Bible. I will provide for you a very helpful example. This here is Hyveth Williams, currently a professor at the Andrews Seminary and described as, quote, the first black female pastor and the first female senior pastor in the Adventist denomination. At a recent regional camp meeting, she made the statement that she was shocked that Adventists voted for Donald Trump. This was recorded and published online, so let's listen. And politically, we are conservative. You know, I know this is being recorded, but I must say that I am shocked that Seventh-day Adventists support Trump. There is a lot, of course, that could be said in response, but notice the key point. It is an undeniable fact documented repeatedly, even in the mainstream news, that abortion is a key issue, or sometimes the single issue, why many voters decide on candidates. And this is true, not only for pro-life, but also for those who support legalized abortion. When Roe was overturned, the New York Times reported here that, quote, Interviews and exit polls showed abortion rights was a top issue for many voters, even across party lines. Notice very carefully that black American Adventists like Williams here will display shock and disgust at the idea that Adventists would vote for someone who promised to overturn Roe. Yet she makes no attempt to intellectually engage with and refute the reason why so many did so. And of course, she can't because the whole teaching that the killing of little boys and girls should be legal is a complete fraud and doctrine of demons. In this series here, they also vilified and condemned a statement made by a very well-known influential Adventist, but I will address that in the next video, so stay tuned. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a nice day.